Today, we are gonna be starting the process of mounting the transaxle into our 412 project. If you guys have been keeping up on this project, you'll know that we are using a Ferrari 599 transaxle in this car. That way we can keep this car a gated six-speed manual. But of course, adding a transaxle to a car that did not have one is going to be a bit of a trick. If you watched the last episode on this car, you will have seen that Martin got the frame pretty much prepped and ready for not only the transaxle to be mounted, but also for the engine. So today we're gonna to be starting the process of mounting the transaxle, which first means mocking the transaxle up to the frame section and seeing what else is necessary to cut. So let's get right to it. good. So this is the 599 transaxle for those of you that remember it. Now you can see here that the front side here is going to fit just fine inside the original 412 frame rails, but it is going to be a bit of a trick to get the back to fit. The actual main mounting points there on the right and left side both are wider than the actual frame rails of the 412. We also have another problem, which is that those mounts happen to be in the same place as those suspension points on the car. So the reason that we need to mount the transaxle first before we mount the engine is that because we're using the factory 599 torque tube, we have to have the length just right, which means it's most important to have the axle areas are in line with the wheels on the car and then have this mounted and then go ahead and mount the engine where it needs to be to make the torque tube fit. 3,000 years later. So after spending quite a bit of time looking at the transaxle up inside the frame, we've made some pretty substantial changes to the plans for mounting the transaxle. The problem being that these factory mounting points are a little bit too wide for the actual 412 frame. And they also have the problem of being right here on the suspension point, which would mean that most of this structure would have to be cut out and then replaced by something new. And that requires a lot of work going into that to try and re-strengthen up this entire structure. So instead, what we've decided we're gonna do is go ahead and cut these off here, as you can see on this line. And then we're gonna be remaking this rear cover and making mounts onto the rear cover on the back. Something that we kind of expected to happen is that this mount here is hollow, as you can see. Uh, so we are going to have to weld a plate onto the gearbox itself to close off the hole. And uh, we're going to spend some time cleaning out a little bit of debris. As you guys saw, we went ahead and dropped the car down onto the transaxle. Uh, it cleared the frame rails now, which is really awesome. And uh, we looked at it for a little bit and we're happy with how everything is fitting. And Martin has decided what modifications he needs to make to the frame and to the fiberglass tub uh, to make this thing fit properly. Not too bad. This here is the piece that we are going to be remaking. Could be pretty fun.
So it's the next day now. Yesterday you guys saw Martin cut out this back tub area to get the transmission to fit more properly. And uh, now that we've done that, I'll show you guys Martin right now is working on this, which is a notch in the frame here. And uh, he already did the cuts while I was going to get lunch, sadly. But essentially, if you guys saw the top of the transaxle kind of was really close to that area. And we're going to need it to be able to move back for serviceability more than, so than anything. So we're going to go ahead and make this notch here. Should be good. Well, as you guys can see, I, uh, I did cut out this section some more so I can get my welder and uh, welding, welder tip into this area because yesterday we realized that the motor mount's going to sit right around here. Steve's going to make a custom diff case which will have a integrated motor mount uh, positions. So we are going to mount that to this part of the frame. Like Corey says, we're um, making a little notch section right here for the diff to clear so we can uh, install the diff in and out of the car easier. Uh, so I'm just uh, making uh, templates for that. that we were gonna go ahead and make this rear mounting system. We wanted to make it narrower so that it fit within the width of the frame. And then secondly, we wanna be able to take this car apart and put it back together to put a clutch in the car. So we designed a mounting system so the transmission only has to go up about a little more than an eighth of an inch. And that's the total amount of clearance that we have. So this transmission, when you lift it up just about an eighth of an inch, it will slide by the side of the mount and the actual transmission can come back far enough with the mounts in place that we can actually get the splines of the drive shaft off the torque tube and get the drive shaft off of the front of the transmission to actually get the transmission out. amount of time making this over the last few days now we'll find out if it actually fits it looks like it fits pretty good to me so now that Steve has this piece machine him and Martin are gonna go ahead and start the process of kind of mocking this thing up in the car and uh, figuring out how we're gonna build the mount system to the frame Martin has already started the modifications to the frame for the actual engine section you can see he added this entire cross brace here. Why is it you went ahead and added that piece? Um, Steve and I were looking at it and we knew that this cross member or cross brace had to be notched like this. 
So before I went and cut this, we wanted to add an additional support. And we saw that these part of the frame is kind of coming in here. So it made sense for us to add a brace down here. And this really is not in the way of anything. The engine has a drain uh, hole about right here, so which is completely out of the way. So we figured it would be a nice um, uh, addition to the frame um, structure. And as you can see right here, I added this piece before I trimmed, so I didn't lose this structure of the frame before I modified it. So now I'm gonna make a template and make this cover plate and weld them all in. And I think this part of the frame notching is going to be ready. This is the drive shaft. It is inside the actual torque tube of the car and connects, you know, the back of the bell housing here to the front of the transaxle. The problem is, if you look at this, it is very bent. I also just moved that. That is about as bent as it gets. So, hilariously enough, this is actually our second torque tube that we've bought because the other one was bent as well. So, uh, what's kind of interesting is that the actual drive shaft inside this one was okay, but the outside was torqued, was tweaked, and would not go on. So, Now, now Steve is going to go ahead and install this with the bearing, and we'll have at least one usable torque screw. Martin got this piece welded up like he said, and now what we're going to go ahead and do is put the engine back in so you guys can see that process and uh, kind of see how it fits. We've got a level on the car and we have shimmed it with the lift here to get it as level as we possibly could. This will focus. And then what we've done is we've set the engine in there and again shimmed the actual engine to get that level as well. But you can see that that dot is leaning just to the right. So we're actually giving the engine just a little bit of a, of a rightward tilt. Uh, that way when the engine is under full load and it wants to twist to the left, it's already to the right just a bit. We've also got the torque tube and the transmission all in here. Everything again is shimmed up the way we want it to. And Martin has started the process of modifying the frame back here. plan of course is like we said to build the transmission mounts off of these back suspension arm points you can see martin's got that cut out and we're going to be building off of that and re everything strengthening everything up and just kind of going off the main frame rails as well as this back beam here to give a really nice structural point for the transmission mount. So Martin has finished the transmission mounts and him and Steve 
have gone ahead and installed the transmission. You guys can see here, it looks really good. I really like the way it's sitting in the car. We've got the torque tube and the engine both in as well. And I'll let Martin and Steve talk a little bit about how these mounts are working and uh, kind of what the next step is. And I actually really like the way that Martin did all the gussets on this. Um, all of them are pretty, I think. Uh, if you actually look at it, I think he did quite a good job of uh, making them look the same on both sides. And uh, you know, you can see that it's gonna be quite a bit stronger. Like it actually has about a nine inch footprint down here on the actual bottom of the frame. Now, if you look at here, you can see that this part here is flat, but you can definitely see that this mount is considerably higher than this mount and that both mounts are actually on the same plane and that the mounts themselves are actually crooked. Now, the reason that that is, is because this engine and transmission are literally tied together by a torque tube. Now, the inside of the torque tube has drive shaft and when this car is accelerating at full power, the drive shaft itself is twisting the two one direction. And so even though this thing is mounted to these really, really, really strong torque tube, the whole system still flexes a small amount. And so the idea I think behind this, when the engine is under heavy acceleration, that the torque tube will actually twist a bit. And at that twisting action, that counteracting the torque of the drive shaft will in fact flatten the transmission out a certain amount. I'm pretty happy with you know the execution of the mount structure. I think Martin did an actual really good job on this, and uh, I'm gonna let him go ahead and go over what we have planned for doing the engine mounts. But Steve and I spent quite a few uh, hours trying to place this engine. As you can see, there's a little piece of wood and a shim and careful measurements to set the engine in the right place. When you make, mount something like this you got to mount everything at the same time. So the back being done, the engine front, of, front part of the engine is still held in place. This is where we want the engine to sit. So if you come around this way, you can see this is a temporarily engine mount. As you can see, I just cut some eighth inch plates and um, basically preset it and you know, pre-calculated how the engine mounts are gonna be. So next thing I'm gonna do is unbolt it and hand it off to Steve, and he uh, he's gonna design mostly, and we're gonna look at it together, and basically come up with uh, two engine mounts that can bolt onto the engine, so I can go ahead and finish the uh, engine mount base to the frame. Um, but one more thing I wanna add. There's a lot of things to consider when you build something like this. For example, this car is gonna have a steering shaft right over here, and the fact that the engine being V12, there's gonna be a lot of runners. So we had to uh, think carefully and place engine mounts in a certain manner. So all that's gonna be in our, in our next video. I'll see you guys then.